What is up, E-Crew? Welcome back. On today's vlog, we'll talk about our one year of owning a Super 73 S2, kind of the feedback that we have, a little bit of a review, and like the maintenance that we have to do uh, owning this bike. here in Santa Fe Dam. Uh, I really like the uh, I really like this area to talk it's local to me and I like talking about the bikes that we have. We've accumulated about a thousand miles already on this uh, Super 73 S2. Not particularly this just just this one bike. We've had multiple Super 73 S2s and um, I keep referring back to it because I, I really like it as a pavement cruiser. It's very comfortable. It's more comfortable than the uh, than the aerial rider. All right, so one year owning this bike, I love it. I, I think it's definitely like their flagship model over the RX. Um, the RX tries to be off-roady, has dual suspensions, a little bit heavier, obviously. And to me, it's a lot more expensive. For me, if you're looking for a Super 73 model and you want kind of like a value bike, I think this it would be it. Um, it's the same motor as the RX. It's the same um, battery as the RX. If you're only using it for pavement, boardwalks, you know, beach, bike paths, I think the Super 73 S2 is perfect for that. As soon as they change the seat, you know, I, it's very comparable to an RX feeling. I really recommend this seat. I talk about it in all my uh, videos. This is the RRX seat. Just better quality foam, in my opinion. So over a thousand miles in an S2, the only thing I've really had to do in terms of maintenance is change the brake pads at around a thousand miles for both sides and that's only like $25 on Amazon uh, it's the E10 Tektro brake pads with that also from time to time you kind of want to keep this bolt here flush with the uh, with the brakes here you get more tension on your brake pads that way you know like minor maintenance like that uh, let's see what else have I done it still tops at 31 32 miles per hour depending on the charge the other um, thing that I've had to replace with a lot of the Super 73 uh, S2s is the, the tail light. Um, I think from the early models, the batches that they were giving out was not so good. Uh, my friends and I all had to kind of replace the brake lights. Thankfully, we were within a uh, warranty period. So that was uh, still covered by the Super 73. If it wasn't covered, you know, you could just buy it off of people for like, I don't know, 30 to $40. The suspensions, um, a few of my friends' uh, air suspensions, the air has leaked in the, you know, in the overtime that they use it. Uh, he is a heavier rider, so he had to just uh, put more air on it. Um, this is where I've uh, tested the Super 73 RX versus the Aerial Rider at one point. Ooh. I think, yeah, I think I went this way. Um, the tires, I have, I'm not there yet, but I know people have replaced them around 1,500 miles. And they said it was still pretty good at 1,500 miles. But definitely has a lot of great experiences with this. You'll get compliments everywhere, everywhere you go. And for a shorter rider, like I'm, I'm only 5'7", it really fits nice for me and my wife who is only five foot tall. In a lot of the bikes that we own, we always refer back to the Super 73 S2 in terms of pavement. If not the, um, the ZX or the Z1, I think those are both suffices, but keep in mind, 
I do really recommend at least a front suspension bike. That's why I feel like this bike is very, um, it, it's well priced at 2,500 at the time. They did raise it now, now that it's 2022. It's like, I, it's about 3,000 now, but er, like everything else, you know, inflation, everything is going up. It's kind of understandable in my opinion. Yeah, this tail light right here, um, sometimes it, it, it just goes out. Um, sometimes it won't work on the brake sensors, but easy replacement if you're still warrantied. In terms of maintenance, I've had, I haven't had issues uh, in my, my 1,000 mile riding this. I really recommend this bike for, for cruising. The one thing I can say is when my cousin fell on, uh, on the crank, these crank set are pretty on, are on the cheap side. They bend easily. So keep that in mind, just don't fall on your crank set. <laughs> I think that's my recommendation. Unless um, you, you have spares and you're willing to kind of uh, bend this backwards in case it bends in any direction. Because there's, there's barely any kind of clearance here against this, uh, this chain guard. I think that this is the great value bike because compared to the ZX, it already has the tail lights and the headlights. And uh, those are pretty um, important when you're riding at night. And I just like the overall look. I mean, who, who can't like the look of this? This thing is amazing, you know? 73 pounds, it's lighter than the other e-bikes out there. And that's kind of like why I opted out of juice bikes, even the RX, which is like 87, 89 pounds. And it's not a big difference for you, but it can be a big difference, you know, like uh, if you really like carrying your bike up and down the, uh, the stairs or, or in, in our SUV, in my opinion, I like that weight difference. And I just like the shorter bike, like I don't have to straddle my legs, I can just put my legs down at will and not have to tiptoe around, you know? I can't speak much of the, uh, the firmware and the system because I'm not the type that actually connects my phone on the Bluetooth and then the, the display software. But my friends have updated it. They like the torque update. I don't, honestly, I don't care. I don't care that much. I'm, I'm not out there trying to be the torquiest Super 73, the fastest Super 73. Um, to me, that's not what this is for. I think it's just an amazing uh, pavement cruiser. If you are actually like me, you're considering an e-bike to pedal with, I would definitely change the seat for the Super 73 S2. But at some point, you're gonna realize that you're not going to really pedal this bike. <laughs> um, it's a scrambler style electric bike, and it, it doesn't have the best geometry for your uh, leg extension. It's fun to pedal here and there, but uh, ultimately it's not built for to, to pedal, if that makes sense. At least not in my opinion. But I, I, I pedal a lot. It's it's all it's all in the discipline, right? My buddy will he he rarely pedals. <laughs> he just um, he he uses this as a moped, and that's really what it is on an electric moped. Though pavement riding is fun, for me electric mountain biking is fun. Er like twice as fun because you get all that roller coaster feel on like single tracks, technical trails. It's like it's challenging, you know? And and you're and you're with and you're out with nature and stuff. So I, to me that's where I get my thrills more so than just pavement riding. Don't get this bike if you plan on off-roading. I guess that's my message. If you plan on off-roading, Super 73 the S2 is not for you. If you plan on doing any kind of jumps, maybe get the R or the RX, but honestly, I, I've seen somewhere it gets damaged because that bike is not really made for jumping as well. Basically, don't expect too much from an R and the RX either because they're not made for off-roading as much as they advertise it to be. At least not in my opinion. The uh, the tires are not. These Badger tires are really for pavement. You you could tell by just the shape of it. This seats at about 31, 32 inches. This uh, S2. But the Aerial Rider 
it's a little bit taller, especially in the stock seat. It was going around 34 inch high inseams, and um, their seat is thick, like five to six inches wide. So it's something you also have to keep in mind. Oh, did we just run over sand? I think. And speaking of sand, um, this is really fun to ride on the uh, on the sand by the beach. Really thick tires kind of help out with that. Um, yeah, in the year that I've owned this, I think I've had about two flat tires on the Super 73S2. I really recommend patching, slime patch. I have a video on that in my playlist. That way you don't have to remove the actual wheel um, if you're just patching. And that's something I, rec I recommend. All right, what else can I uh, vlog about today? <laughs> We are getting our oil change right now from a shop around here in Irwindale. And uh, I figured I'm going to vlog while I'm getting an oil change because I'm not just, I'm not just the type that just waits in the, uh, in the wait room. Hello. Santa Fe Dam is a, a nice place to take out your toys. <laughs> Whether it be an electric bike or uh, drones, this is actually where I learned how to drone <laughs> uh, like two years back. It's a nice open space. Just a nice scenery. And this is definitely what these e-bikes are for. Checking out the nature, checking out the scenery. Get yourself an e-bike, guys. It's definitely worth it. Instead of just being indoors, shopping on different other things, get yourself an electric vehicle that'll take you to nice sceneries. And I know with the pandemic and everything, I'm glad I did. And I'm also glad that Crystal, my wife, actually likes e-biking with me as well. Um, every once in a while, we like cruising, um, exploring on our uh, Super 73s or our pavement cruiser e-bikes, but we definitely prefer the, um, the trails more. I wanted to also mention, don't get this bike if you're looking for a real fast bike. <laughs> Obviously, um, this only tops at 31, 32 miles per hour, and it gets there within 13 seconds. Um, that's good enough for me because I don't really need, I don't really like to drive in um, areas where there's, on the streets, or if you're looking for like an electric bike to deliver food or you know go to work and use on the street a lot on traffic um, I don't recommend um, there's some few mods you might want to do but again these bikes aren't really made to be on the street in my opinion they, they, they kind of like stay on the bike path for the most part and on hills they're okay they're okay on hills they're, they're not bad but if, if it was any steeper than that um, this rear hub motor is not the best for um, hilly areas, in my opinion. So something to consider. I mean, I, I, I guess you can take it on streets. My, I have a buddy that take that uses his S2 on the on the streets a lot. Um, it just depends on the speed limits, right? Um, where I live, it's like 40 miles per hour, and there's no way this bike can hang. But like Hollywood area. There's a lot of traffic and a lot of stop signs. I know uh, my buddy drives his S2 there a lot. He takes his bike um, to Griffith Observatory like every week. <laughs> with this style of electric bike, I can take to drive throughs And with my electric mountain bike, I would not be able to take in a drive through because <laughs> they look nothing like a, a electric vehicle, my, my mountain bikes. But speaking of that, I just thought of uh, maybe hitting up McDonald's, so let's let's try to do a drive-through, shall we? Speaking of physical abilities, this bike is like the easiest to to kind of balance on because the tire the tires are not only four inch thick; they're four four and a half in the front and five inch thick in the rear. Um, so really, it's the most. Uh, stubborn e-bike that I have at turning because it just likes to stay straight and that's basically what you get out of um, fat tire e-bikes and that's the thing with between this e-bike and then the RX like you could literally just stand up your seat and have your feet absorb the uh, 
unwanted bumps around your neighborhood, you know? But if you're lazy and you can afford the, uh, the RX, I think it's worth it. Yeah, let's see about doing a drive through at McDonald's. <laughs> let's see. Hi, can I just get a number eight, uh, the, the McMuffin? Okay. All right, thank you. This is so bad. Why am I getting two sausage egg McMuffin for myself? <laughs> That's okay. But yeah, at least they kind of um, were able to assist here. I didn't think about how I'm going to be holding a drink. I was merely doing an experiment and I thought maybe, I don't know, I didn't think that far ahead, I guess. Hello. Thank you. All right. Well, we can one hand this. No problem. Our, um, our car in the shop is less than a mile away. But there you go. Um, there's another positive with these Super 73 e-bikes is they allow they allow you on um, most drive throughs I am going to say I think I had a problem with Burger King before but that's good but um, they ultimately helped me out but I think they are um, I think their sensors were, wasn't sensing me but I was, I've done this so far. This is my probably third time doing drive through I've done this on uh, Taco Bell, Burger King, and now McDonald's. <laughs> oh shit. Bro, I just dropped my phone. Uh, yeah, that's why I really recommend phone mount or when you're e-biking, um, have pockets that have zippers because you never know when your phone's going to drop. A few moments later. Still waiting on our car. Oil, oil change. But I saw this uh, parking structure and um, we're going to explore. <laughs> That's the other great thing about owning a Super 73 electric bike. Just explore. You can explore other places such as parking garage, which I always like to uh, go up on to see uh, the lay of the land. We might get kicked out. There's cameras everywhere, but we might not. They might not care. <laughs> we'll see. So this bike and the range, I'm only 157 pounds. I could get it about 25 to 40 miles depending on how hard I ride it um, but those are the realistic realistic um, range in my opinion on street use and what have you just as a reference Irwindale reminds me of uh, city of industry everything is just businesses warehouses and uh, not much residential What I'm seeing, not much residential. The little nugget that I like um, about these e-bikes in general, their charger has an automatic shut off when you're charging your bike. Um, so that way you're not overcharging, you're not excessively charging the battery and that kind of helps on the longevity of your bike. When you plug in your bike, you just set it and you forget it um, because it auto shuts off. Um, when it's fully charged. I've had e-bikes where you had to put a timer on it um, just for extra measurements. So that's something to me that's a, that's a really good, real good bonus on the, the Super 73. So good, good on them for doing that. Uh, what else can I speak about it? I like the S2 headlights uh, more than anything. Some folks don't like it as much, but I like, I like how the look of it. I think it, re it fits real nice on the uh, cafe racer style. Yeah, as I mentioned before, fat tires are really good. Um, it helps you maintain your balance pretty easily. Uh, but with that, there's a con to it. it it's actually so s stable that it's hard to corner, you know, um, tight turns. 
haven't had any issues whether it's a v1 v2 or v3 motor thankfully doesn't come with a horn i recommend getting yourself a horn it's up to you there's lots of choices out there i mean what else can i say about this bike it's already a beautiful vehicle by itself i put fairings on it before to kind of uh give it a unique look we're just killing time here guys we're killing time and we're working on our corner our side cornering i guess that's what we're working on we're leaning hard on the right and on the left and i like how you could use this as like a scooter it's pretty comfortable at my height you could just stand and kind of get a feel of what scooter feels like when the wheels are right under you you kind of feel like you're flying at times you know that's what spending zero energy and just gliding through the streets you know, it's not something you really learn if you know how to bike you would immediately know how to balance on one of these bikes and just press the button <laughs> which is amazing just about anyone can ride these e-bikes that actually might be the scary part because you know um you don't want like kids just shredding it up ruining it for the electric community just biking without etiquettes you know another thing i actually wanted to mention is because um because it looks like a, a moped or a motorbike you know some people still don't know what it is so like for example the uh when i went to the drive-thru not all drive-thru will, will give you the same kind of um not everyone will accept you at the drive-thru some people still see this as a bike and some people still see this as a motorcycle like um it kind of just varies from people to people and you know some people will give you looks driving on the uh on the sidewalk and some people kind of already acknowledge that acknowledge and know that it's an e-bike so in my one year riding this bike um, those are the kind of things that you're going to expect some people know what it is some people don't know what it is some people will think that it's really cool and some people will think that that shouldn't be where you currently are riding it on <laughs> so it's like it's still a gray area in other words even on the bike paths all right anyhow guys thank you for tuning in on this quick vlog um i've had it again for over a year now and i've accumulated a thousand over a thousand just a little bit of a thousand miles in this super 73s2 model and i recommend it i highly recommend it if you're looking for that super 73 lifestyle um, there are other cheaper bikes out there um, but if you're looking for like comfort i think this this model provi definitely provides that beach cruiser comfort your contact points it's pretty good for your ge geometry anyhow that's going to be today's quick one year 1000 miles uh, blog about the Super 73 SU model. Check out my useful links in the description below for additional discounts on an e-bike, whether it's a Super 73, an aerial rider, or if you like off-roading like I do, um, I recommend DIY uh, Bafang mid-drive kit, also in the description below. Thank you for tuning in. This is Julian signing out. See you guys in the next one. Peace.